Welcome to Scotland Unplugged, and how a misunderstanding in this cemetery led to one of the greatest Christmas stories of all time. That was 2020 me. Why am I in a graveyard talking about Christmas stories? It's the 1st of December. I'm feeling kind of festive. Edinburgh's looking very festive. Three years ago, I made my first Scottish history video here. It was on a GoPro. The editing was awful. There were dad jokes. Some things never change, but I still can't bring myself to take it down. In the video, I told a story about my favourite Christmas story that isn't die hard. In 1841, the already best-selling author Charles Dickens was due to give a lecture in Edinburgh. He was kicking his heels, killing some time before the gig. He took himself off for a stroll around the Royal Mile and wound up here in the Canongate Kirkyard. As a burial ground, it dates back to the 1680s. There was a church completed here in 1691, and it's a bit imposing. There is some pretty full-on gothic death furniture. Dickens was wandering around, eyeballing tombstones, when one in particular grabbed his attention. The inscription told him it was for Ebenezer Lennox Scroggy, a mule man. Dickens completely misread it and thought that Scroggy was a mean man. So mean, they'd stuck it on his gravestone. The thought obviously bothered him, and he wrote in his diary that to be remembered through eternity only for being mean seemed the greatest testament to a life wasted. Fast forward to 1842, and a government report on child labour and mines told a tale of grim conditions. 16 hour days, beatings, the kind of thing that today we'd probably call Dickensian. Dickens read it and it made him angry. He hadn't always been a famous writer. When he was only 12, his father had been locked up in a debtor's prison. As the oldest boy, Charles was very suddenly the main breadwinner, and he had to go to work in a shoe polish factory. The report bothered him so much, he wanted to do something about it. So he started writing a pamphlet, originally calling it an appeal to the people of England on behalf of a poor man's child. But he realized that was kind of fact-driven, political, maybe even a bit preachy, and off-putting to the people it was aimed at. Far better to appeal to rich industrialists from the heart, make them question their own ways with a story. Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in six weeks, walking the streets of London to bash out the details in his head. He had to publish it himself because his last novel hadn't sold very well. It was expensive to produce, illustrated by the well-known political cartoonist John Leach, whose images are still the ones you see in films today. Scrooge, whose name has now become kind of a byword for meanness, is visited by the ghost of his business partner, the similarly penny-pinching Jacob Marley, then by three more spirits who help him to see the error of his ways. The ghost of Christmas present seems like the one you'd most like to hang out with. The thing is, though, Scroggy wasn't a mean man at all. He was born in Kirkcaldy in 1792. He was a cousin of the economist Adam Smith, whose grave is just behind me over there. In fact, Scroggy himself is buried somewhere in that area, although his tombstone was removed sometime in the 1930s for development. He was a councillor, my Lord Provost of Edinburgh, and into a bit of everything. He was a vintner and a corn merchant by trade. His family had supplied the Endeavour on Captain Cook's voyages, and he had supplied the booze for George IV's visit to Scotland in 1822, the one that kicked off the whole tartan mania thing. Two bottles of Scroggy's Highland brandy produced for the event are said to survive today, and are probably worth quite a bit. This is the grass market in Edinburgh's old town. Scroggy lived behind me here above what is now the Beehive Inn. I've done stand-up comedy in there. He was pretty cashed up, but the name and the misunderstanding are really the only touch points between him and Ebenezer Scrooge. In fact, he was full of the joys, and supposedly through the best parties. He was buried here in 1836, and the fact that the headstone was put here by his friends probably tells you everything you need to know. But if Ebenezer Scroggy wasn't that kind of character, it's thought that another inspiration kind of was. An MP for Berkshire, John Elwes was famously miserly, a skinflint. 
He inherited the equivalent of £18 million pounds or $22 million dollars in today's terms after his father died. His mother is said to have starved to death because she was too tight-fisted to spend any of it, so he inherited the family estate. Then he fell under the influence of his uncle, and the two of them supposedly spent nights together putting the world to rights, getting angry about other people's extravagances, only ever with a single glass of wine. According to his biography, all earthly comforts he voluntarily denied himself. He would walk home in the rain in London sooner than pay a shilling for a coach. He would sit in wet clothes sooner than have a fire to dry them. He would eat his provisions in the last stage of putrefaction sooner than have a fresh joint from the butchers. He went to bed when it got dark to save on candles. He wore ragged clothes and people would give him money because they thought he was a beggar. But he was really only mean to himself. He was quite happy to lend money to other people and not get it back. He once lent someone £7,000 for a horse racing bet, and when he died, he left his kids £28 million or $35 million in today's money. So not really that much of a Scrooge either. A Christmas Carol formed a lot of the ideas of how we celebrate Christmas today. It led to what we now think of as Christmas dinner in the UK, before Dickens made Scrooge order one, turkey wasn't a thing. It was a time when traditions were changing quickly. Decorations, trees, even presents were all new to Christmas. A lot of what we think of now as traditional was melded together in the Victorian era. Even the notion of the white Christmas in the UK, where it hardly ever snows at Christmas, is thought to have come from Dickens' descriptions. It's probably my favourite story because it just never gets old. It's a tale of conversion to an understanding of what's really important in life. And I love the fact it was inspired right where I'm standing now. There have been numerous film and stage adaptations over the years. I like the John Luke Picard version, mainly because of the cast and probably the time it was produced. My kids like another version. Chapter 1 Marley was dead. I think we might stick with the Muppets version for now. 